Let's bring in uh, Mark Rega, a senior advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's live from Jerusalem. Mark, uh, good afternoon to you there. Good morning to you. All right. Uh, it is good news that they have opened the Rafah crossing. I, I know that this was a negotiation between the United States, Israel, Hamas, and Egypt. Is it just going to be four or 500 today? Is that going to be it? I can't give you the answer because we, we want everyone to leave who wants to leave. Uh, the question is, what will Hamas do? When Secretary Blinken was here on his first visit, that's over two weeks ago, we discussed our willingness to work with the Americans to get all your American citizens out. That was our commitment. And I thought it should have been done, you know, when, it, when we made that decision. But Hamas was holding the American citizens as sort of hostages. They didn't want to let them leave. Apparently, they've agreed finally to let them leave. I hope they can all get out and return home and be with their families. Yeah. So Hamas is telling the mediators that it will release the hostages soon. This was said in a video yesterday on the Telegram app. What's the latest? So uh, we don't believe much of what uh, Hamas is saying publicly. They, they, they say something and they say the opposite the next day and you never know what is true. Mm -hmm. And the assumption is that everything they say is just psychological propaganda for their, for their terror machine. I can say the following. We are continuing to hit the Hamas terror machine hard. Uh, they are facing our blows. They are feeling our might. And I think that pressure will do more than anything else to get our hostages out, mm -hmm. together with the diplomatic pressure on Hamas's allies in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to get our people out. Well, Ambassador, you're right. They are feeling it. But my concern is the propaganda war. It looks like Hamas is winning it. Um, and it I worry that the U.S. as well as the U.N. already hates you guys already, and they've displayed that over the years. But I worry that it's going to cause pressure from the U.S. and American journalists that you guys won't be able to do the, the full war effort for long. Do you worry about that? You know, what you talk about the propaganda from the other side, and the, the trouble is, and, and sometimes I think parts of your, your colleagues in the media are guilty of this. People don't understand Hamas is not a democracy. No. Uh, Gaza is a, is a brutal authoritarian regime there. And people who speak to the media, whether they're doctors or nurses or some local official, they have to follow the party line. That's right. uh, they have to follow Hamas's line. And so all the information coming out of Gaza is, is controlled by Hamas. The pictures you see are controlled by Hamas. The words that come out of Gaza are controlled by Hamas. And as a result, people get a very warped picture. I mean, have you seen a single picture of a dead Hamas terrorist since we started operation inside Gaza? No, they don't allow pictures. They only want you to believe that innocent civilians have been hit. Well, obviously, we've been hitting Hamas terrorists one after the other. So the Houthi rebels declared war on you. They're hitting you with uh, some long-range rockets. I know you're not shy about bombing uh, the terrorists in Syria. You've hit back at the Hezbollah in Lebanon. Will you hit back in Yemen? Uh, uh, first of all, if we're about to do anything, I'm, I can't share it on television for obvious reasons. But all I can say is a statement that you know is true and I know is true. That is, anyone who attacks Israel will face Israeli retribution, will face response. If you shoot missiles into Israel, we will hit back. Right. Ambassador. That's um, a yes. <laughs> yeah. If Hamas is eradicated, as Israel would like to see, and many people around the world would, um, what happens next? Who's waiting in the wings? So first of all, can I just rephrase your question and say when Hamas is eradicated? Like because we are determined. Yes. Now, we, we will do this. We're talking about what happens after there is no longer a Hamas controlling a terrorist Gaza. terrorist group. Yeah, yeah, a brutal terrorist group mm -hmm. uh, uh, responsible for the most hideous violence. You've seen the pictures. I've seen the pictures. These people are the enemies of everyone who believes in humanity. These people are, as, as President Biden said, sheer evil. Now, what happens when they're gone? Uh, we've, got, we've been talking with the, uh, with the United States about different scenarios. I'm not going to go into too much detail. All I can assure you is that like when ISIS was defeated in Syria and Iraq, better things came after ISIS. I am convinced that once Hamas is gone, once they no longer have their terror enclave in the Gaza Strip, I'm sure what comes after will be preferable, right. both for Israelis, who won't have to live in fear of these brutal terror attacks that we've suffered, and for the Gazans, who deserve something better than this terror right. regime that, that doesn't give a hoot about them. Sure. Um, Ambassador, before you go, uh, Trey Yings was just talking about how uh, Israel, Israeli missiles struck 
a refugee camp, the Jabala uh, refugee camp. Apparently you were targeting a Hamas big shot uh, and there were other big shots in Hamas there as well. So is, is that the new dimension rather than hiding in their a hospital, they're hiding with people who are trying to escape for their lives? So first of all, the Jabalia refugee camp, a lot of people have moved to the south, the vast majority of people. And I noticed in the pictures that we just saw in your report, uh, the people around the crater where our strike had happened were mostly young men of military age. And, and it didn't look like a lot of innocent civilians to me. But, but what I can tell you is this. If you are part of the Hamas leadership, if you are part of the command structure that was responsible for the rapes, the murders, the beheadings, uh, the, the mass shootings, the, 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 the massacres that, that they perpetrate in Israel, we will find you and we will take you out. We'll do so in a way, we'll try to be as surgical as we can to avoid other people getting caught up in the crossfire. That's our commitment as a democratic country. But if you are responsible for Hamas atrocities, we will find you and we will take you out. How many are there? There's enough. Uh, there's still a few more on the list. And the senior leadership, they have, to care, they have to worry about us too. Israel will find you. We will reach you. We will take you out. But, but Ambassador, I'm sorry, Ainsley. Some of the criticism is that you guys knew about their positioning before, but y'all didn't strike them. And I'm hearing this from IDF guys that I've known for a long time, that y'all knew about the position. So why strike? Now, why, why not be preventative? And I know that's a conversation for, for after y'all take out Hamas, but y'all knew these targets before. So first of all, there was a strategy to try to deter Hamas from attacking, which obviously failed. And we have to have our own investigations in Israel uh, of why we were surprised on October, on October 7th, why we paid such a heavy price in blood. And we have to have lessons learned because, you know, we always prided ourselves on having really good intelligence and that we were taken by surprise like we were. That's unacceptable. We have to do a better job. That's clear. But if you ask about Israeli preemption, we could only preempt if we had specific information. And unfortunately, we didn't have the specific information and we paid for that in blood. We have to get our act together, and I think you're seeing now the Israeli people united as never before, understanding that we have to deal with this threat. And what's the bottom line? The bottom line is we refuse. We refuse to live next to this enclave of terror on our border. That enclave will be destroyed. That's good for Israel. That's good for the civilians of Gaza. We will end Hamas's regime of terror in the Gaza Strip. Is there a difference between the Palestinians and Hamas in your view? Should we separate the two? Listen, there are, there are in Gaza, there are, there are literally hundreds of thousands of children. We don't want to see anything happen to them. Right. We, right. We, we are making a maximum effort. We, don't, we are targeting Hamas and its military machine. Yeah. Right. When you talked about the refugee camp, it's not Israel firing on this huge tented camp, right? They're buildings, they're concrete buildings and houses in this neighborhood in Gaza. That's 100% correct. And you have to ask why they're refugees, because they're living in their own country. Why does the UN still classify them as refugees when they're living on their own, in their own homeland? But that's a separate issue. What happened, those pictures you see, is we targeted the terrorist, and we got him, and uh, he deserved to, to meet his fate. And because it was an underground tunnel network, that caused the surrounding buildings to collapse. Mm -hmm. And this is how Hamas works. They build their military infrastructure under civilian neighborhoods. Yep, under schools. I've said before, and it needs to be said again, in normal countries like the United States, like Israel, our military is to defend our people, to protect our civilians. Hamas inverts that in a perverted way. For them, their civilians protect their military. It's disgusting, it's an outrage, and it has to be condemned. All right. Ambassador, thank Thanks, you very Ambassador. much for joining us live from Jerusalem. I was